This is our first session on Galatians 3, 23 to 29. We're just going to focus on verse 23, although this paragraph is written in a way that everything relates to everything, <laughs> including uh, relating to the preceding paragraph as well. Uh, now, before faith came, what does that mean? We were held captive under the law, imprisoned for the sake of faith, which was to be revealed. So then, the law became our guardian unto Christ, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, so before faith came, now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, and you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Father, I ask for your help as we try to understand what it means that faith came and there was a before faith came and what it means that we are captive under the law, imprisoned for the sake of faith which was to come. Grant us your understanding, your intention, as we try to understand these words. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's keep in mind that Paul is dealing with a situation in Galatia where some people have come from Jerusalem and they are trying to persuade Gentiles and Jews, or especially Gentiles, that justification comes through works of the law. And Paul is at pains to say, no. Justification comes, life comes, inheritance comes, the Spirit comes through faith in Jesus Christ, apart from works of the law. Whatever working is involved, that's later and a fruit, not the cause, not the instrument by which we are made right with God. That happens because of Christ through faith. That's what he's dealing with. And you might think, well, he can make short work of that, like he did in 2.16, and just say it. But here's the problem. The Bible is made up in the Old Testament of a large section called laws. And those words are in the Bible for a reason. And so there's a prima facie case that the people from Jerusalem can make and say, look, those laws are there for a reason. You got to keep them in order to get right with God. And Paul, therefore, is really working to try to explain how the law doesn't function that way. So here we are now at 323. Before faith came. What does that mean? Before faith came. First, compare it back with verse 19. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring, as Christ, should come to whom the promise was made. So, until faith came, I think, is going to be a parallel with until the offspring should come. Or compare it with verse 22 down here. The scripture imprisoned, that's the same word used here in 3.23. The scripture or the law expressed in scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe when Jesus Christ comes into the world. And so I'm suggesting that before faith came means before faith in Jesus Christ. 
because of his coming came, before faith in Christ came in the era when Jesus came into the world. Or compare verse 24. So then the law became our guardian unto Christ before faith came. Is Christ is coming and the law was leading us there unto Christ that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer under a guardian. And so the faith coming means Christ has come. So I take this to mean before faith in Jesus Christ was possible because Jesus wasn't here yet. We didn't know who Jesus was and the way he would do his work. But now he has come. Before that, before the incarnation and faith focused on Jesus, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned for the sake of that faith which was to be revealed. In other words, this imprisoning effect. This captive effect of the law was for the sake of faith in Christ. Now, why did there need to be such an extensive season or period, what, 1400 years maybe, from the giving of the law to the incarnation? Why such a long period of captivity under law. Because it isn't that the case that faith wasn't in the world. Faith was in the world from the beginning, and we know that because remember Galatians 3, 6 to 9, Abraham believed God and it was believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. This is this is 430 years before the law. There's faith. There's saving faith. There's justification by faith. Know then that those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So there's plenty of faith in the world before Christ came. That's why I'm saying this doesn't just mean before faith period came. It means before faith in Christ explicitly came because there's plenty of faith in the world. Why didn't, you could ask provocatively, why didn't the incarnation happen in Genesis 15? So Abraham is here. He's being taught. That justification is by faith in Genesis 15, 6. And then Jesus could have come the next year, right? And then you could just do away with this, this 1,400 years of imprisonment. Why did there need to be this? Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions. And those transgressions are the imprisoning of everything under sin. Why? Evidently, God believed, saw it as wise and fitting that the bent of sin to take responsibility for itself and work its way to heaven needed to be exposed by the law to show how hopeless it is for 1400 years as the law draws people in to misuse the law as a ladder by which they climb to heaven and show their moral fitness for God's acceptance. You can see a little bit of what I'm trying to get at in Romans 3. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped. So the function of the law for all these years is to stop mouths 
it it stops mouths because it reveals sin even if you rebel against the law or if you embrace the law as a means of justification in either way you're sinning and the mouth is stopped you can't get right with god by the use of the law that way we know that whatever the law says it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world held, held accountable to god for by works of the law no human being will be justified since through the law comes the knowledge of sin indeed the experience of sin and so for 1400 years god is making plain making plain making plain how sinful we are and how hopeless it is for us to try to get ourselves saved by the use of the law but now this is just like we saw back in chapter 3 23 before faith came but now that faith has come so here but now the righteousness of god has been manifested apart from law that's the coming of jesus although the law and the prophets bear witness to it that's abraham for example in genesis 15:6 where righteousness by faith is revealed already in the law the righteousness of god through faith in jesus christ has now come in to the world so paul is saying to those folks at at um, galatia who wonder what in the world is the law for if these folks from jerusalem are wrong in telling us that the proper use of the law is to make it a means of our justification and paul is saying it had a historical purpose and the purpose was to hold israel in particular but the whole world as well to hold israel captive imprisoned precisely to show them how hopeless everything is without christ before faith came now that faith has come the guardian unto christ that's what his answer is the law is for holding sinful man in check and not sending christ right away but letting there be what 2000 years of history and 1400 of them under the law in order to make clear that we are sinners through and through and even when presented with God's perfect law we manage to turn it into a means by which we show ourselves worthy of justification that's hopeless